Hey everyone, so in this last video in the four part series I did with Strathmore on some of the essentials of urban sketching. Um, in this one, I'll do a sketch from a reference photo I took um, from my trip to Brazil. And uh, a big thanks to Strathmore again for allowing me to share this with you. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this one. And a big thank you to everyone who has supported my book so far, Painting, Drawing a Simple Guide, and the Supplementary Workbook. And also, remember, if you ever want me to uh, see some of the drawings that you have done or share them, just tag me on Instagram, you know, preferably in your story, so that way I can reshare them too. Because I really love seeing, I mean, I've seen some awesome stuff that you guys have done um, with this book. It, it's so cool and it's really inspiring, you know, to see how you've actually, I've seen some really creative takes too on some of the exercises that I've created in the uh, workbook and uh, some of the drawings from the um, the guide, all right? So it's really cool. Remember, if you want me to share them, just tag me in your stories, all right? Or if you want this feedback, just send me a message. Sometimes I don't respond as quickly as I would like to, but definitely, you know, just send me a message and I will get back to it because I really try to go through everything. Even the ones that Instagram by default put in like a spam folder, you know, sometimes it, the, the way it works, I have to actually go in the spam folder and go through everything. All right. So, um, yeah, if I haven't responded to you yet, I just haven't gotten to it yet. But definitely keep sharing. I love seeing the work you guys do. Now, in this demo, we're going to take a look at this scene and do a sketch as a way of implementing what we learned in this workshop. Okay, so I'm going to start things off by uh, doing a few thumbnails. Um, you'll notice in the first thumbnail, I keep it really basic, really simple. I'm just concerned here with like uh, the basic shapes. I'm just breaking up that picture plane into the basic shapes just to give me a sense of the proportions and where things are. So in the second thumbnail, I've kind of guesstimated where I think the vanishing point is. And what you'll notice as a result of that, it, it kind of harmonizes the buildings or the shapes a bit more. They seem a bit more organized than in the first thumbnail. And that's one of the key things that I had mentioned before about establishing your horizon and uh, vanishing points because they really help to organize your space. In this third thumbnail, I'm actually combining all that I've uh, established in the prior thumbnails. So now I have a sense of where the, the vanishing point is, where the perspective lines are going. And I've also have a sense of the, the basic shapes. So now what I'm doing is kind of building on that uh, information that I already have collected and now organizing the space in a bit clearer way. And also you'll notice that I've also changed the frame. It seems more like a portrait. And that's something I decided by exploring the, the prior uh, thumbnails. So this shows you really the importance of of doing just a few simple thumbnails. They really give you a good foundation to really start moving forward with how you develop your composition. Okay, so now I'm going to do the underdrawing uh, for the ink sketch. Now, uh, one of the most important things that I want you to pay attention to is the fact that I go from simple to complex. And I go from simple to complex in a variety of ways, in terms of shapes, details, uh, just the general composition. So you'll notice I go from big shapes to small shapes. So you notice that I focus on that main diagonal that's going from the uh, mid left to the lower right. And that is very important because it really cuts the composition about a third and also drives a lot of the way that you enter the scene. And then you'll notice also um, that I start breaking down the picture plane. I'm seeing it as a flat surface. And I'm breaking, just like you would a jigsaw puzzle, I'm breaking it apart into these big shapes. And then I go in and work those, those big shapes and break them up into even smaller shapes. And that's when you go into details. But for now, uh, I am not necessarily going into uh, anything too minute because in my mind, uh, the whole purpose of the underdrawing is just to provide a guide for my ink work. You know, it gives me it, uh, a certain level of freedom to not have to worry about certain things. Like, for example, proportion. Um, uh, where the, are my lines straight? Are my lines going in the right direction? Have I placed this window correctly? Have I placed this door correctly? Those are some of the things that you're alleviated from. You don't have to worry about that when you're doing your ink work. So I'm kind of thinking about what are the things I don't want to be thinking about when I'm inking, you know, and that's kind of the purpose of your underdrawing. You're not just doing a drawing and then drawing over it. 
You know what I mean? You're really kind of uh, thinking about your process after this and what you want to free yourself from. So there are certain things you want to be able to enjoy with your inking and you shouldn't have to be thinking about that. So that's what I'm trying to take care of now. So I'm establishing proportions. Proportions is very important. You know, the size of this, the placement of this, where does this go? Uh, where does this end? And so on. So I'm making sure that um, those are some of the main things that I'm establishing now. And as I said before, you know, when you're doing your sketch, you're not limited to uh, just the drawing. You can make notes, you know, you can say, okay, you know what? Remember to uh, use this stroke here. Remember that the light is coming from that direction here. Remember that I'm going to do this when I'm drawing this window, when I'm drawing this plant. Remember, I'm going to use this texture for the leaves. Those are the types of information you want to put down. You're not just doing a drawing for another drawing. That's not the point of doing that on the drawing. You're really trying to establish a guideline for what your ink work is going to follow. And once you do this, you grasp the understanding of what your underdrawing is about. Because, you know, then you'll say, okay, you know what? I'll work out the details here. And in this area, no, I don't have to do that. You know, you realize that you can, you pick and choose. You're selective about where you focus on with your, uh, your pencil drawing. Because remember that drawing is a multifaceted activity. You're thinking about multiple things at once. You know, while you're drawing, you're thinking about, uh, you're sketching, you're thinking about proportions, you're thinking about light and shadow, you're thinking about structure, you're thinking about perspective, you're thinking about shapes, you're thinking about lines, you're thinking about values. There are all these things, you know, it's really a complex activity. So, you know, uh, what you're doing is you're trying to address these different things in different ways and with different levels of emphasis. So that way, when you're inking, you can allow yourself to focus on what you want to focus on. Because at the end of the day, guys, you have to remember this is uh, a fun activity. You want to have fun. You want to be able to relax. You want to be able to really enjoy the process. You know, so the more you're able to focus on that, the more fun you'll have and the more enjoyment you'll get from this. Okay, so I started the inking. And, uh, you know, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to share with you my thought process. I'm going to, you know, give you some insight on the way I, I'm thinking while I'm drawing, you know, what are some of the concepts I am addressing and what's really going on in my mind, not just a verbatim step-by-step -step narrative of every single thing that I'm doing, you know, every stroke. Okay, now I'm drawing, you know. Uh, so now something that's very important, as I had mentioned before, uh, I forgot which, uh, I think it was in part two, about uh, simplification and uh, appreciating the abstract. It is so important. I really can't uh, emphasize that enough. Now, the reason why is because when you're drawing, you know, there are two different perspectives you apply. You apply a perspective as the person drawing and uh, you're applying a perspective as the viewer of your drawing, you see. So you have to be thinking about uh, what does this look like? while you're drawing the thing you see so that way it can make sense and this is where the draw what you see and draw what you know comes in because you know you know what you're looking at you know what you're drawing but you have to be thinking also what will the viewer see will they be able to interpret this will they make sense of this you see so uh what that leads to is finding the balance between not being too exact with everything and but still giving enough information so that the viewer can participate actively without doing too much work or being confused. You see, so uh, w it, how that applies to this? Well, what I'm doing is while I'm drawing, I know that I'm being selective of what information I'm putting down. I'm not putting down everything and I'm not even trying. You know, uh, I am abbreviating this. You know, your sketch is an abbreviation. It's a summary uh, of what you're seeing. You see, so you're choosing what information to put down. Now, uh, I deliberately change things. Like, for example, if you really, you know, look at the image and look at my drawing, you'll notice that, hey, there are four doors. He put three. Hey, there are five windows. He put, you know, four of them. Uh, no, that line is not that. That's not my concern. My concern is creating a version of this view that is for the viewer to enjoy from my perspective. So 10 people can do this scene and come up with 10 different drawings. And that is fine. That's the beauty of this whole thing. That it's, it, it's a creative experience. So, you know, while I'm uh, 
drawing this. I'm actually coming up with things, you know, like, you know, when I, uh, I'm drawing uh, this building or this plant, I'm thinking, okay, what leaves am I going to, well, how am I going to capture these leaves? And I just do it in the moment. And, and while I'm doing it, I'm saying, hey, I like this. Or I may actually adjust it a little bit. That's the part of the drawing. And that's fine. You know, you don't have to feel you have to get everything correct. And it's always a learning experience. After every drawing, I say, yeah, you know what? I like the way I did that. Uh, you know, I could have done this this way. Note to self, I will do that next time. You see, so it's a critical experience while you're drawing as well. And you should be reflective. And that's a very important part of growing and developing your skill because you have to reflect. If you draw, if you sketch, if you create and you don't reflect, it is not healthy for growth. It is not healthy for progress. All right. You have to look back on yourself. Look at back at what you're doing and uh, the, the lines you make, you know, um, the way you move your hand, the way you grip the pencil, the way you uh, uh, you create your strokes. You know, like here, I'm, I'm creating that little uh, the road. I, in my mind, you know, I'm saying, okay, these little strokes, how am I going to abbreviate that? Maybe I'll use half circles. I won't use complete circles because I don't want it to be flat. You know, so I'm using these small C-shaped uh, little strokes to actually create that impression. You know, when I'm doing the sides of the building, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, the graffiti. Am I going to draw that? You know, I'll just leave that out. And that, those are the types of uh, decisions I'm making in my mind, you know. Uh, in another drawing, I may actually want to tackle that and say, you know, I'm going to actually recreate this graffiti on the wall because I think it's uh, an important visual aspect of the composition, you see. So uh, I choose to develop what I want to develop based on what importance I want to give it in my uh, composition. So some things is not necessarily formulaic. You know, like, I, I, this is what I do in every composition. No, I kind of uh, approach each drawing with a different attitude, a different feel, to see what speaks to me here. You know, do I feel like this is important to develop? Yes, okay, I'll do, I'll do that. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll abbreviate it. I'll, I'll deliberately leave out information so it's not overly developed. I'm not saying much with it. I'm not letting it s speak a lot in the work. You know, and that's, that's a kind of... Uh, creative approach you want to take you know you want to let the scene speak to you don't feel like you're a slave to what you see like you have to account for everything you have to draw everything you have to fill in every detail or it will not be no don't do that I'm telling you if you do 10 drawings of the same scene people will have a different experience with each one that is different and that is a whole, that's, that's the beauty of this whole creative experience, you know, that you're creating different versions of that, that scene that you're seeing. You know, and, and something I've learned over the years is that uh, you have to learn to trust yourself, you know. Um, I've had classes before and I've seen uh, many instances where students will not do something uh, and wait for my guidance. And then when I do share, they said, yeah, I was thinking that. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, that's why you do it. You know, so they were right. They, they were thinking the same thing all along. But for some reason, they doubted themselves. They didn't have the confidence. They didn't have, they didn't believe it was right or it would be the right thing to do. You know, and they wanted my affirmation. They wanted my assurance. Like, yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the path. That's the route to take. You know, and I've realized that it's something you have to just learn to do. You just have to just learn to, um, Trust your, your intuition, trust your artistic instinct. You know, your mind is saying, explore that, do it. You know, just try it. You know, it, it's not, you're not losing your, <laughs> it's not the end of the world, basically. You know, just take chances with your work, you know, because that's where growth comes from. That's where discoveries come from. That's where you really learn stuff like, oh, so this is how you draw this. Oh, you know, what? I discovered a cool way to sketch people. You know, I discovered a really cool way to draw bricks. You know, you, you just do it. You know, sometimes it will, it will sound crazy. It will uh, feel crazy. It will feel awkward. It will feel uncomfortable. But you just do it. Like, you see, like here, where I'm doing the, uh, the top of the drawing. I decided mid-drawing to actually use the, uh, the roofs of the building as the edge of the frame. 
and I didn't know how it would turn out. But if you notice, the pencil sketch, I actually sketched the entire box. And while I'm drawing, I just said, you know what, let me just, hmm, let me just try this. And I just decided to use the edge of the, of the roofs as uh, the contour. And, and what that does is it, make, it breaks it up, you know, and it makes it a little bit more interesting to me. And those are the types of decisions that you have to make, you know, um, here with the roof. Um, I'm actually using very similar strokes to capture the shingles of the roof as I did for uh, the pavement on the road. The virtually the same type of strokes. I'm using these C's. The only thing that's different is that I'm actually turning the C backwards. And that's pretty much it. Now, something that's really important to address as well uh, is to be aware of <clears throat> the size of your drawing. You know, uh, we do drawings of different sizes, right? Sometimes we do a small drawing, sometimes we do a larger drawing, you know, but uh, the, the, the point is, uh, this, a small drawing <clears throat> will not yield as much detail or, you know, it's just not possible to force as much detail in it as if you're doing a, a larger drawing. You see, so that's something that you will have to gauge and learn on your own by drawing over and over. You'll eventually start realizing, okay, it is not necessary, nor is it possible for me to uh, recreate this amount of details in a drawing this size. It is not. And you know what's, what's actually uh, even more interesting? The viewer does not expect it either. All right. So that's another thing. You know, if you do really small drawings or if you do really large drawings, know that there's a different level of accountability there. And also, depending on what you're drawing with as well, if you're doing a, a, a drawing, a larger drawing with a bold point, you know, there is not necessarily uh, that much room for really fine details as opposed to if you're drawing with something fine, you know. So uh, <clears throat> and I mentioned that because here where I'm working on the, the doors on the building, the side of the building. Now, if you look really closely, they're really just single strokes and dots that I'm using to filling in the details. And you know what? It is enough, <laughs> okay? Because uh, this is something I have learned over the years, and this is something, if you're just starting, you will learn as well, that it is not necessary for you to put all the information there. And this is what I was referring to about in the process of simplification, of learning to appreciate and, and embrace the abstract. It's just like with Impressionism, you know, uh, things up close will look like blurs and, and crap. It will just look like random arbitrary lines, but it will pull itself together when you step away from it and see it as a whole. And that's the idea here that I know that this building, you, the viewer will look at this within the context of the scene. They will not see these individual doors in isolation. If you saw it, then you'd be confused of what I drew, you'd say, what am I looking at? But because you're looking within the context of this drawing, your mind takes care of that. In other words, I have to just imply or convey and you will conclude. You, the, there's a psychological aspect of it where the viewer takes uh, over for you. They, they, they it complete the race for you, basically. You know, so don't feel you have to fill in everything, all right? And if you're, if you're sketching, especially with ink, it's also very important that you keep things loose. If you notice that a lot of the contours, my lines are broken, you know, I deliberately do that. Because, you see, when lines are uh, completely straight and connected, it engages the viewer in a different way. It's almost psychologically that you're telling the viewer it is closed. And what you have drawn is concluded and is, is definitive and it is what it is. But when there are lines that are broken, it engages the imagination a lot more. There's a lot more participation, especially for sketching. For sketching, it's very important that you especially leave lines loose and open because it engages the imagination more. Because after all, it's a sketch. It is not a finished drawing where you're trying to make it photorealistic. You're capturing every detail. You know, you're really just abbreviating. And by abbreviating, it's even more important that you keep your lines loose. You keep it a bit scattered, a bit open, you know, and that enables the viewer to come in and fill in the uh, missing information. And your work is more engaging, more expressive. It actually says a lot more. So pretty much all the uh, ink work is done. And 
uh, if you'll notice, it looks pretty bland. You know, there's no uh, particular area that stands out. And uh, that's the whole idea here. Now, what I'm going to do now is just go in um, and start deepening some areas, uh, uh, making some outlines more bold. And as a result of that, just make the work a bit more visually appealing and visually interesting. You know, uh, creating some uh, contrast with the strokes, um, you know, changing the varying the weight a bit and this will add some interest and also leave it a bit open if later on i decide like you know what i want to apply some uh some watercolor so that's one of the reasons why i'm leaving it a bit open as well um, generally if you know that you will apply watercolor to a sketch try not to do too much shading with your ink leave it a bit open let it breathe a bit you know leave your lines broken and uh and let the work kind of uh give some open space so that the viewer can actually go in and move through it because that's really what will be happening. The viewer is uh, going through the work, going from image to image, going from detail to detail, and it keeps, it's almost like having a, a puzzle uh, that enables the, the viewer's eyes to wander all through it. Okay, everyone, so if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and uh, keep your eyes peeled for a, a giveaway I'll be doing soon. And I'm going to be jumping into doing something else. Actually, you guys can leave a message, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know uh, if you want me to jump into uh, portrait drawing because I haven't done a portrait drawing video in a while. I haven't done a uh, figure, figure drawing um, tutorial in a while and uh, or perhaps a ballpoint. You know, I kind of feel for that and just so I generally do it. I have a long list that I go through and knock stuff off, but sometimes I just have to feel to do something different and I just do it. All right. So um, bear with me with that. Um, also, um, again, if you remember for all the subscribers, if you haven't got new notifications, remember to click that notification bell so that you won't miss any new notifications from new videos that I uploaded. All right. So other than that, thanks so much for watching, guys. Keep practicing and I'll see you in the next video.